everybody. We're flipping the script on an unboxing video with Right Start Math. I'm Sarah. And I'm Kathleen Cotter Clayton from Right Start Math. Let's open it up, shall we? Kathleen, can you walk us through what people are going to get when they order the Right Start Tutoring Number Sense kit? I can. So first of all, as you can see in here, we've got our book, abacus, and cards. We'll open that in a second. Also in here, we've got a math balance. Now this may differ depending upon which one we've sent you. So if it's got a, just a plain white box, don't worry about it, it's still a math balance. So let's go ahead and open these up and see what they look like. So I've got it opened up. So in this part, we're gonna have your math card games book. This is going to be the instructions as you're gonna go through and teach your child. So here I've got the abacus with the instructions in the front. And then I've got the card deck. So first of all, I didn't unwrap both of these because they're gonna be the same. But basically these are gonna be the numbers if you kind of look at them here. Zeros, ones, twos, threes, all the way up to 10. There's six of each number in each half. So put it all together, you've got 12 of each number. So that's the card decks that we're going to be using. This one, is the base 10 cards. These little guys, this represents a thousand. These represent a hundred. These represent 10. And these little ones behind represent one. And these are gonna be used in the curriculum. This is our place value cards. This allows a child to make a number. So for example, let's say I wanna make 8,000. Uh, I'm gonna make 100 and Oh, let me get the tens out here. 50, or we can also call that 510. So 54. So we can make numbers with this. Because so often kids will see this number and they'll see the 8,154 and they don't realize that, oh, it's really 8,000. They see it as just an eight who happens to be hanging out in that lineup. This shows them that it's actually 8,000. Place value can be a tricky concept for some kids too. It really can, and some adults too, yes. So this is our corner deck that we're gonna actually, it's a game we're gonna play. We've actually got a video on that. With Gemma, so, yeah. Yes, so we're gonna go ahead, and this is a game that's gonna be played in the Number Sense book. So this is all the materials that come with it, including our math balance. I wanna show you how to put this together because this sometimes can throw some people. That's a big box. Why is it's, it so big? Well, it's because we've got this huge, long arm in there. There might be some more things in there. Shake it out for me. Yeah. There we go. So this is the base, our stand. I'm gonna put that in there. That part's pretty easy. And then here's my pin that's gonna hold this together. The, it has blank on one side, numbers on the other. So I'm gonna pull this apart. Oh, they got this one tight. We're gonna put this together. How many Stick times have you done this, Kathleen? Oh, a gazillion. Sometimes it's not quite even. Mm. This one's pretty close, but you can see this side's down a little bit. That's where these little white things come into play. And there's four of them. There's four of them. So they can go on the bottom. You can kind of snap them in and you can use them then to fine tune your arm to get it even. So would you eyeball this or would you use a little no, bubble level? No, you can just eyeball it okay. because I can tell if I've got it like this. So I'm going to make it really heavy on one side. Mm -hmm. That is not even. So if I scooch it over, and you just kind of play with these. And this is something you probably don't want your oh, kids to sliding. play with. they're sliding. I see, they're on a little track. They're on sliding. track, right. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna move it a little bit more that way. To me, this side's down a little bit. Would you agree? Yeah, and if you kind of get down, you know yep. what, that looks, it's just down a tad yep. on that side. So I'm just gonna okay. slide one of these over. Oops. I would call that, well, maybe it's a little heavy. Let me scooch it back. So it's not really that, it's not like science. You okay. just need to get it organized. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Now sometimes, some of these come from our supplier and we have issues with them. And no matter what you do, I put all four of them on this mm. side and it still isn't heavy enough. Sometimes go and take one of these little white guys and clip them on the top. Okay. Now that's gonna throw this one way off because this one was in balance. But I just want you to know that that's an option if you get one that is 
just not, you can't get it to balance using the regular ones down here. Will these slide as you're adding weights to the pegs? Well, let me show you what happens here. Let's, okay. I want to show you how to use this. So we're and troubleshooting a little we're, bit. Right, so okay. we're just getting it set up. And this is in the book. It, it'll talk to you about that, but sometimes it's nice just to see it. I agree. Okay, so I think I'm going to make it a little bit heavier here. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It looks pretty perfect. Because, now, have you worked with this before, Sarah? I've seen them. I've not okay. played with one. Okay. We're going to have Sarah be our guinea pig with uh, this. Geez. Yeah. Okay. So what I want you to do, and we actually do it this way in the book. I want you to put one on either side and make it balance. So these each say 10G. They all say, yep. Yeah, they they represent where? 10 grams. Now, she does not see the numbers on her side. But the pegs no. are on our side as well? We have pegs on our side, so let me flip okay. it around. So this is what Sarah was seeing, but I don't want your kids to see this. I want your kids to see this side. Okay. So actually, let's put it like this so you can see it better. So okay. put one on either side and make it balance. So I'm going to go four and four. Okay. Why did that balance? Because four equals four. Okay, because they're the same. Okay. Thought and that was I a always, trick question. Well, I always like to start with that because sometimes <laughs> okay. kids don't know what balance means. Oh, so just saying. Just saying it. So I'm, I'm going to start with something very simple, and then I'm going to, and again, the book will walk you through this. You don't have to sit here and take notes. So you can see it. So I, I get comfortable with what balance means. Okay. Excellent. Now I want you to put two on one side, one on the other, and make it balance. Do you want two on the same slot or two? Anywhere? Surprise me. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that does not balance, so you're going to have to move something around. Oh, I have to make them balance. Right. Okay. Now, notice that I'm not telling her where to put them. I'm just saying it's not balanced. Still not balanced. If I put them both on six. I'm out of whack. Okay. Okay. Now, let's just say she's getting a little teary, which you're not. But, <sighs> yeah. So, I might guide her. So, put them on somewhere, and I'm going to start guiding you. Oh, <laughs> I think you did it. Now, why'd that balance? Well, I put two on the three and one on the six. Okay. What's three plus three? Six. Does it work that way every time? Three plus three is always six. Right, but what if you move them to a different spot? Is that always gonna work? If I move these two? I don't know, try it. Here, let's do this. Let's take them off, and now I want I feel like I'm not one on this side. No, you're do. doing good. One on this <laughs> side, two on this side, okay. and now you can't use the number six, because I just said so. Okay. Because otherwise what will happen is the kids will do the exact same thing. They'll do six and two threes. Okay. So I want to switch it up. You can't use number six now. So do whatever you want, just make it balance. Two on this side, one on this side. Oh, two on that side. Yes. Okay. I also switch the side because otherwise kids always think you have to put the two on this side and the one on this side. It's going to work both ways. Now that didn't work. Is this going to work? This is. What are these two numbers? Seven and three and ten. And why does this work? Because seven plus three equals ten. Isn't that cool? So if I'm playing around and I bump this to nine. Because you think seven plus three equals nine. I, I, as the parent, don't have to say anything. But then I can adjust it and go, okay, but seven plus two is nine. Right. So now I'm playing around Right, with and numbers. you're seeing how they're related. So let's move this one back up to 10. Now notice, by the way, as a parent, I'm not touching it. If you want to play with it, do it later. But right now, it's my child's time. So Sarah's got a 10. So again, I'm just, just kind of guiding her. Make it balance, just whichever way you want to. And this works because? Eight plus two equals 10. Right, and I like the child to repeat what they've said because it just, it solidifies. So it's not just a, oh, I got it. I'm explaining why, I'm solidifying with the words. So if I move this here, what are you gonna do? Leave my 10, I like it. Do something with this one. And this works because? Is that scripted in the book? Pretty or much. Are you knowing? No. Okay. No, it's it's in here. So from the teacher's point of view, the parent's point of view, you don't have to take notes. You don't we have got you to covered. It's right. telling me how to get right. the child to think this way. Like here's the math balance in partitioning ten. And this is so, day three. And this is day three. Now this book, let's back up a second. Mm -hmm. This book is for the child who's struggling with their addition and subtraction facts. So this is going to start out with, what does three mean? 
How is 307 related, or in this case, 9 and 1 related to 10? So this is just working with the numbers. Then we get into adding, subtracting, adding two-digit numbers, subtracting two-digit numbers, adding four-digit numbers, subtracting four-digit numbers. And as we're doing this, we're going to be playing games. We've already given you the cards. You're going to be playing games as you're learning this. We don't have any worksheets. No worksheets. No, no worksheets. Paper. No, this is going to devastate the children, but they'll be fine. <laughs> oh, darn, no yep. worksheets. So between the conversation and the hands-on, the manipulatives, between seeing and moving and seeing the results, that's where this tutorial about number sense is, yes. is being effective. And it's day-by-day -day instruction. Exactly. Mm. Yep. Well, yep. that seems pretty painless. Yep. So these tutoring... This tutoring box that we opened mm -hmm. up right, that is, number one sense in, one. Yep. is one in a series. What are the yep. other titles? So there's number sense, which is addition subtraction. There's multiplication division, which is cleverly multiplication division. Then there's fractions in 42 and a half days. We also have a clock and money. So if you want to have your children learn how to teach time, again, we do it through games. You want them to learn money, we can teach them through games. So if someone is using Right Start Math or even possibly a different math curriculum altogether mm -hmm. and you hit a wall, you hit a, a hump that your child's just really struggling with, you could pause, you could spend time on that skill mm -hmm. and hypothetically pick up where you left off or even beyond where you left off. Right. Right. We assume with these books, the number sense, the multiplication, division, the fractions, that the child is probably two or more years behind where they should be. So we're not going to come in with, oh, honey, let me show you. We're going to come in and say, okay, I know you've been struggling. So we're going to talk to you, the child, as you know, through the parent's voice, we're going to talk to you and, and as a child who is older than what they need to learn. Okay. Which is, is nice because a lot of times if you try to take your child backwards, you're dealing with stuff that's younger than they are. And sometimes that can be insulting. This assumes yeah. that they're missing those pieces, but they're an older child. And so we treat them with that same respect. It's not cutesy looking. Right. This is probably going to be a third, fourth, maybe fifth, sixth, seventh grader. I know a 19 year old who went through this book. Mm. So we, it, it's for the older child. It's not for your six year old who's learning their addition because this assumes they're older and that they've been exposed but haven't been able to catch what's going on. Okay. Same thing with the multiplication, division, and fractions. So every day you're working with these manipulatives in the card games. Mm -hmm. And is there, um, is there an assessment before you move on or you're just, you succeed that day, you're good, you move to the you next will, day? You will know, I the parent will know how you are doing because I'm playing a card game with you. I can see that you're over there struggling or you getting this, this is good, you're getting it. That's really all the assessment I need. That's I know I can assessment. go on. And if your yeah. child does struggle, play another card game. Okay. Because remember, there's no worksheets, there's just the card games. So how long do you think this might take in a day? I would say you're probably teaching uh, 20 minutes maybe, maybe 30 at the most, but probably 20. And, and then you're including. playing a game. No, so and then plus the game. 20 minute instruction. Ish. Yep. Ish. And then some games and right. the games are going to reinforce what you did in yes. the little, they're kind of mini lessons. I, wanna, I feel like yeah. they're mini yeah. lessons. Yeah. You know, this is a step away from your math curriculum. And in the language of our curriculum consultant team, we call these a fixer product. Yes. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily want to bump an older student all the way back to a first grade counting teddy bears looking right. math. Right. And yet they missed an they important need, step. They need to go back there. And that's what the tutoring system does is it fills in that missing pieces. We're assuming that, again, the child's older, so we're going to treat them with respect. Not that others don't, but we're going to treat them with respect and teach them at the age that they're at. So they can so, move forward. So they can move forward. Right. I love that idea. Yep. Thank you so much, so, Kathleen. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.